I went to a public Indonesian school till I was, uh, I think I was 10, and like repeated like 50 grades because I couldn't speak the language good enough. Back then it was normal to see all that shit. I mean, there's no there's no age limit for drinking or cigarettes or anything. And like I said, I thought that was normal when I was young, but really it was hectic. I guess they, they thought it was a good idea that I finished my high schooling in Australia. I guess maybe because maybe I was getting a little too out of control, like every other kid in Bali was. Just videos. Videos got me psyched. So rock mics, but this rap shit got me want to clap back. The last hour goes the young pesos made from scratch. But in due time, soon to get my I brought so much watching all types of videos growing up. When I was like watching videos, I would go out and just pretend that I was them. I'd like paddle out and just in my head I would be like, I'd be like Andy or something and just try and surf like him and I, I wouldn't care if anyone was filming or not. And just in my little world that was what I was going for and people started like filming like people like Jake and you know Kai. I remember that session clearly. I actually went there by myself that day. Rocked up to the beach and no one was out and I was like what the hell is going on? Why isn't anybody surfing right now? It was so sick. It was pumping like kind of like I felt like I was at backdoor that day. If I, if I had a choice, I would just stay in Indo. I mean, if we're talking about getting clips, why would we chase something that's not really there, you know? Like, if you're on a small budget, you're not gonna pay five grand to go to a place when it costs you like a hundred bucks to go down across a ferry and get like the longest fucking left barrels of your life. Why I couldn't like get a sponsor in Indo? Like, I'm here, I have a film crew. What's the difference? Like, I could film all day here, get some clips, send it over to you guys in America, and then you have a worldwide streaming. Why does it matter where I am, you know? Like, I, I never got that, but, and now I'm here, and I'm with Brixton, and I'm so happy, man. Like, it's, it's rad, like, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm learning how to surf again, you know? Like, you know, like, I didn't, I didn't really surf for, like, three years. I kind of went away and worked. And my parents were like, hey, Lee, you should let surfing go, you know? Like, it's, it's over, man. Like, you're, you're 20, 27, no, you're 28 now, and you know it's it's done. Like it's time to it's time to move on. And, and my dad was like so convincing. It took me so long to give it up, and I went over to New Zealand and I actually like gave it up. Like, I remember like walking into the kitchen one day, and this, and the guy before me quit his job because the job was so shit, and he he didn't finish his service, so I had to do his work on top of the stack that I have to do and I had to do it in like an hour and the, and, and the chef's like you better get that done mate and I'm like I looked at the dishes and I thought about what I used to do and I literally started crying like I was like fuck I had the best life you know like and like and, and I looked at those dishes and in my head I was like fuck if, if I ever get that life ever again I'm never ever gonna fuck it and then one day like Joanne she like said you should go do the pedang comp and I just started surfing again, and like Yvonne, like, God bless those guys, you know, like Yvonne and Carla were like, hey man, we should, let's make a video, you know, like, let's try it, let's try to get you going again, and Brixton hit me up, and I was like, what the hell, like, what's going on, you know, like, I thought about that time I was in the kitchen, like, I remember that wish I made, you know, and my wish came true. That was really long, sorry. <laughs>